Good morning, Chairman Parker and members of the Board of Environmental Protection. I am Robert Marvini. My title is State Geologist, and I'm the Director of the Maine Geological Survey in the Department of Agriculture, Conservation, and Forestry. I've held this appointed position in the department for more than 21 years, and I have more than, more than 31, uh, 30 years of experience working with various aspects of Maine's geology, and I'm speaking in support of the rules before you today. Only a few weeks ago, I took a delegation from Maine to the Upper Peninsula of Michigan to visit the Eagle Mine. It's a large underground nickel and copper sulfide mine in, uh, in the Upper Peninsula. Uh, Professor Eastler was part of the group, as was uh, several members of the, the DEP. Uh, Northern Michigan is similar to Maine in very important ways. First of all, the geology, the igneous and metamorphic rocks there that host mineral deposits are largely analogous to many areas of Maine that also host mineral deposits. Um, the northern temperate climate is very analogous to Maine. In fact, they probably get even more precipitation than we do here. So they have to deal with the water issues in, in, in the same way Maine would have to address water issues. We visited the Eagle Mine both with the mine's environmental managers and we also met with the state of Michigan's mine regulators. Um, we, we visited this mine because it is recognized as a metallic mineral mine, a sulfide mine that is, uh, was permitted under modern stringent regulations and is being operated in a fashion that meets uh, all its environmental obligations. And in fact, this mine um, was singled out in floor debates in both the Maine House and Senate in June of 2013 uh, be because it was a, a, a model mine and permitted under very strict re regulations. And under the mine closure plan, the wastewater treatment system will be shut down within five years, which is less than the 10-year limit in the rules before you. So I took away three important points from this visit. One is that mining of metallic sulfide minerals can be done in a responsible manner in a northern temperate climate. Everyone uh, on both, all, all parts of that issue in northern Michigan agree that that mine is being held to the highest environmental standards. Secondly, a successful process uh, like Michigan's to revise their statutes and rules begins with broad community engagement. That's what we heard from uh, both the mine side and the, the regulators. They've all been involved in community engagement and it began right at the beginning of the process. Also, the proposed chapter 200 rules before you are actually stricter than Michigan's in several ways. Um, first of all, the, the primary mine zone, it's an underground mine, and the actual mining area is located 1,000 feet directly beneath the uh, Salmon Trout River in Michigan. And that's an important fish habitat and, and fishery. So uh, mining is not having a significant impact on the river. In fact, infiltration of water into the mine is, is about a rate of about 10 gallons per minute. That's like running five garden hoses in the entire mine. And all that water is pumped out and goes through the wastewater treatment plant. So the rules before you would prohibit mining under bodies of water like great ponds, rivers, and streams. But yet this model mine in, in northern Michigan is doing exactly that. The Humboldt Mill, which is used to process the ore and separate the uh, valuable minerals from tailings, uses discharges the tailings to a wet storage pond, which will remain uh, flooded after the mine is closed. So they'll have a wet mine storage wait, wet mine waste storage unit that will exist post closure, even after they close down their water treatment plant, which they propose to do in five years. Um, Northern Michigan may have more of an opportunity for that because they have a lot of old um, open pit uh, iron mines that could be used for this purpose. But nevertheless, the rules before you prohibit wet uh, tailings and impoundments post-closure. 
Michigan does not uh, doesn't allow perpetual treatment after a mine closes, similar to the to the rules proposed here. However, Michigan does not set a time frame beyond which the uh, treatment system would just be considered uh, perpetual. These proposed rules have a 10-year limit beyond which it's it's assumed that that's actually um, perpetual treatment and it wouldn't be permitted to uh, uh, begin that mining. So um, I I think a 10-year uh, limit is is appropriate. The the determination of how long it will take to address runoff from uh, a mine waste unit or some other mine area um, is done by modeling. And it's, it's a forecast. How well can you forecast out what's going to happen? I think it's similar to forecasting the weather. The weathermen do pretty well in three days. They do a fair job for seven days. Beyond that, it gets a little difficult. The uncertainties begin to pile up and, and uh, complicate the, the uh, determination from a, from a model. So I think a 10-year limit is an appropriate period of time. And in fact, it, what was, was proposed in 2013 in one of the legislative proposed amendments to the uh, mining statutes. Also, uh, Michigan's uh, groundwater compliance, uh, they have a similar definition of mining area as in the proposed rules. And they have a compliance setback a compliance point 150 feet from that boundary. The proposed rules here have use 100 feet. So those are some differences that actually make these proposed rules stricter than those in Michigan where this mine is being uh, managed in a very uh, environmentally sound manner. Turning now to the issue of mining on state lands, um, there, uh, Title 12, Section 549, that's in my Department of Agriculture, Conservation, and Forestry. Um, this statute defines several tasks with regard to mineral resources on state lands, which include the submerged lands, by the way. And there are authorities provided to the director of the survey, that's me, and to the director of the agency having jurisdiction of the state lands. That might be the director of the Bureau of Parks and Lands, it might be somebody in IFNW for IFNW lands, et cetera. I'm not going to read this entire section, but there's, a, there's a, how many sections? There's 12, uh, 15 sections under that, under that statute uh, related to mining on state lands. The first thing that I'm involved in, director of the survey, I can issue a permit for somebody to go explore on state lands. Currently, there's one, only, only one active permit to explore on state lands. Um, the director of the survey and the director of the Bureau of Parks and Lands may promulgate rules governing exploring and mining of hydrocarbons on state lands. Well, we haven't promulgated any rules, and anyone who seeks to uh, exploit hydrocarbon resources in Maine is wasting their time and money because there simply aren't any. Location of mining claims so that director of the survey records exploration claims on state lands. And there's currently only one claim on state lands, and that's the submerged lands of Walder Pond in Lower Enchanted Township. Um, uh, let me see. Uh, recording of an exploration claim that's done in, by the director of the survey. The, the important, one of the important provisions is the land use ruling. Any person with a recorded claim may make application to the director of the agency having jurisdiction over the state lands. So it might be the director of Bureau of Parks and Lands. It might be a director in IFNW or elsewhere um, for a ruling on whether uh, mining can be carried out consistent with any prior or proposed other use by the state or any agency. And uh, a public hearing is required. At, at, at that point to uh, take input as to whether this is uh, a consistent kind of activity. Um, and proposed, uh, proposed uses of public lands are established in detailed management plans for each of the public lands units that have, and all of those have been developed through a, a public, uh, public process. The next step would be a mining lease, and the director of the agency shall uh, jurisdiction over those lands will hold yet another hearing 
for the purpose of determining whether uh, to grant or deny a mining lease. And I want to emphasize that a mining lease is not a permit to mine. It's just a declaration that the mining might be consistent with any prior proposed use of that uh, piece of state land. The only mining lease ever issued was on NATO Pond in Fort Fairfield for the mining of agricultural lime. So in, uh, in summary, at least one or two, or at least or possibly two public hearings are required before a mining lease may be issued on state land. Mining under underwater bodies, um, that's also uh, in, this, uh, in this section. Where any mineral is situated under or in a bed of a or stri uh, stream or lake, then there's a whole process involved. And in the late 60s, Nato Lake in Fort Fairfield was a drain to allow mining of agricultural uh, lime. And Goose Pond was drained in the 60s to allow mining at the Callahan Mine. There's uh, requirements about uh, compliance with regulatory laws. Uh, nothing in this chapter may be deemed to relieve any explorer or mining lessee from obligation to comply with uh, applicable environmental or regulatory laws. So the main DEP enforced regulations on the reclamation of Lato Lake, Nato Lake um, after the cessation of mining. The statute does not vest the director of the survey with authority to permit mines and makes it clear that the holder of a mining lease must comply with uh, all environmental regulations. With regard to uh, designated lands, uh, there are a lot of designated lands uh, in, uh, in, the, in the regulations. They may not be reduced or substantially altered except by two-thirds vote of the legislature. So um, submerged, uh, substantially altered in the use of these de designated lands means change so as to significantly alter physical characteristics in a way that frustrates the essential purposes of for that land as it's held by the state. These are state parks, et cetera, state public lands. And I, I would have to say it's difficult to see how an open pit or underground mine on any of these designated lands would not trigger um, the uh, substantially altered issue that requires a two-thirds vote, vote of the legislature. So those are, those are my comments. I'd be happy to respond to questions. Thank you. the Eagle Mine and the local uh, native population in terms of how they how they work together with the mining area. That's number one. And then number two, so I want to have to ask another one. Um, with regard to chasing after the copper and, um, and nickel ore, they're doing it underground. <coughs> and right. they're using a tremendous amount of, uh, of drilling and computer uh, modeling. Can you tell us briefly about what that does and what they're doing? Well, they're, they're, so they're operating in a very uh, environmentally uh, responsible manner. Um, they are uh, managing their, their mining activity to minimize the impacts on the environment. They're minimizing their waste management to also uh, mi uh, minimize their uh, impacts and working under very uh, stringent environmental regulations. I don't know, Tom, if that answered your well, that's specific okay. question. Well, the thing is they've got uh, some uh, really extensive drilling uh, to see where things are underground. It's not easy to see what stuff right. is. And rather than just doing a bunch of random drilling, they're drilling utilizing uh, pro the same process, if you will, of um, using computers to tell them where the ore is as opposed to where uh, it isn't. And they That's basically right. then follow down. They're extending their mine from 1,000 feet deep to 3,000 feet deep 
because they found an ore body down there that's far richer than the current ore that they're mining right now. Right. That's done primarily with uh, computer uh, algorithms and uh, some very sharp college age or young 20, 30 year old geology uh, geologists who are doing all of this uh, computer work. All right. And again, back with the, uh, the native it, population. Yeah, so. and it definitely involves, you know, very stringent controls to ensure that uh, the mining is done in a responsible manner. There's no question about that.